on screen. Weapons are next. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All oh, vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw. For now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. We apologize for the delay, but we plan on blaming Skype for that, so we hate you, Skype. You suck. Anyway, joining me on the podcast tonight, we have... Oh, well, tonight, haha, today. <laughs> joining me on the podcast today, we have Amy. Hello. And we have Stuart. I'm uh, somewhat awake. And we have Scarecrow. Sort of. He did a really good job at the at Oz Comic Con, which we just came back from, and he interviewed two people, and I've got the audio from that ready to go when we finish the Oz Comic Con segment. So, anyway, on today's show we have the Oz Comic Con Brisbane 2015 recap, and we also have Doctor Who season nine. Yes, we're nine. Nine or. 70s something like depending on how you want to count it <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think it's actually 63 if you count all the old stuff anyway um so we're getting the ball ball started and getting it rolling and let's hit it off with the oz comic-con recap okay yeah now it good good it was insane my legs still hurt it's yeah. tuesday it finished on sunday i still can't walk <laughs> uh, i can't talk i was in lines half the time <laughs> yeah well i'm just glad i had my tardis that i could sit on I, i've got a dvd unit tardis that i can use as a chair it, it works <laughs> when it doesn't get signed yeah i got a sign by mark shepherd i'm happy <laughs> so it was either get my tardis signed by mark shepherd or get my firefly signed by mark shepherd i was like eh, tardis <laughs> tardis <laughs> Yeah. Even that sign the spot he broke. Yeah. That, Wait, that he broke good. it? Yeah, he, he, he broke it a little. Oh, damn it, Crowley. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Man, we had some fun. Oh, um, we had but, a, That was the most insane weekend I've had in a while. <laughs> yeah. I wonder why. Yeah, we'll Not get to that. that. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that later. We'll get into that later. Besides that, yeah. it's still the most insane weekend I've had ever. Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's start at the very beginning of the list. Saturday morning. Uh, da, 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 da. Wait, should we start Friday? Friday morning. Friday morning. Oh, Friday morning. Friday morning. Yes, Friday morning. I should really start at the beginning, beginning. Yeah. So, Friday morning, we did a special interview with Tim Rose, which I let Stuart head mostly because he's our Star Wars guy. Aren't you, Stuart? Yeah, I had a, a, it was really fun. Yeah, really, really got to enjoy doing that. Exactly. So that is actually already up and live on the podcast channel. It is our po- uh, Save Sci-Fi special podcast number two interview with Tim Rose. Um, the audio is a little bit weird because we're in a room and the room's um, audio was absolutely horrible. Yeah, basically the rooms were in with all glass, so it rebounds really yeah, badly. Was, the, the echo was is, was pretty bad. So we apologise for the audio quality. and But it's about a 15 minute interview and right about the middle of it, he told us something really cool about episode 7. Stuart, do you want to tell him? Yeah, um, so yeah, uh, we got to confirm um, that uh, Tim Rose will be Admiral Akbar in episode 7. Yeah, pretty much. And he could be any number of other um, Akbarians. Mon Calamari. Mon Calamari. Mon Calamari. I almost said Minbari. That, that, oh. that, the wrong st- totally wrong thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's how you annoy Star Wars fans. <laughs> it's what I do. Um, so yeah, so we... Uh, that interview, and then after the interview, we had a bit of a chat with him, and he went for a wander through the town and had a lot of fun. Um, and then, then I got to do the VIP meeting Greek Friday night. Yes, and what was that like? Ah, uh, do you also mean Jody first? My uh, I, uh, fuck, I'm gonna spoil it now, and I my fiance and I. Ah, <laughs> I was gonna leave that till later. Eh, <laughs> but we'll, we'll we'll tell everybody the story a little bit later on. Yeah, so. we'll tell the story later on. Um, the story's worth it. The story's in, about a Saturday. Yeah, 
we uh, walked in and we were, just, we were it was so surreal just like just seeing them all just standing around having drinks with everyone so we found a table to sit down at and uh, Mark Shepard was was at it so yeah. we got we got uh, go that to had talk. nothing to do with the ran- you randomly chose the table with the King of Hell at yeah <laughs> I see that happening. <laughs> I, I could just well, they moved a lot. Of, they moved a lot of them around from like table to table and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, that that's that's. Really well, we cool. got about fifteen minutes with Crowley. That was really cool. So, was it worth the oh. part of seven hundred? Oh hell yes! Oh absolutely, friggin' lootly, it was worth it. No, well, I might have to save up for one for me next year. And it was only six hundred for Oz Comic Con, actually. Nah, whatever. Six hundred, seven hundred. Once you've reached that level of money being spent, it just sort of loses all value. <laughs> but yeah, we got um, we got um, Mark Shepard first. Uh, we walked around for a bit, talked to um, Yaya Hunt and um, Eve Beauregard, who are cosplayers. Nice. The um, the cosplay guests, so the cosplay guests, because uh, Jody actually knows what um, Eve. That's really cool. <laughs> we now we now know her on her first name basis, her real first name, but which we won't say. No, no, no. Don't you dare do a dox on me. If you dox them, I will no, no, throw no. you out the airlock. I won't do that to them. Yeah. Well, yeah, we talked to them. Uh, went, uh, went back to the table, and Jody was talking to uh, Brian Krause, Leo. Yep. And I was talking to Tim Rose's wife. Nice. <laughs> so, sounds, like a, sounds like a really fun night. Oh, that's, that's not the end of it. Yeah, the, there is some parts of that conversation you're not allowed to talk about. No, I know that. But yeah, they moved. Uh, they moved along, and then we got um, Vanna Lynch and Robbie Jarvis to end the night. Ooh, nice. So. <laughs> Robbie was drunk. <laughs> English people can't handle their alcohol. I feel sorry for says, Robbie. Says the Jedi that doesn't drink. <laughs> I do drink. Yeah, I'm sorry, but water doesn't count. <laughs> hey, hey. Unless it's unless it's homeopathic. Wait, actually, no. Sorry, I'm wrong. It's not water. It's homeopathic alcohol. It's water that remembers what the alcohol was like and has the same effect. Hey, hey, hey. Carillion ale in the clean glass. Just remember that. <laughs> if homeopathy is true, all the water we drink is bird shit. <laughs> yeah, that makes that. sense. That remember makes that. sense. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, it's not the, the, media, the VIP night was really cool. So. Yeah. Um, That'd be why you had a crazy weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then a long rock Saturday, and we got our media passes and went immediately to the David Hewlett Rachel uh, Lutrell panel. <laughs> that, Man, that is. Was, that <laughs> was oh, I heard th- I had heard things about that. That was that was hilariously insane and, and terrifying dangerous and dangerous and dangerous. Yeah. Oh, wait, what? what Mummy, what, I think that woman's dead. Oh yeah. Um. So <laughs> Rachel was talking about um how crazy her kids are. She was tucking yeah. her three-year-old in, and um, she's like, oh, is, is, do you want me to check under the bed for monsters? It's like, no, but the lady in the corner's dead. <laughs> and she's just, she's just like, oh. wait, what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is going on? So she just sort of did the whole, yep, I'm just going to casually back out of this slowly. And uh, the good thing about Oz Comic Con is all the panels are recorded. <laughs> um, so if you do want to watch the panel in its full in, in its entirety um, I'm not sure how they're doing it this year they used to do a DVD um, which is always fun to watch sit down and sort of spend hours going through all the different panels um, the only downside is they don't know how to record audio it burns my ears to listen to they yeah. just use the audio from the camera and it's like no guys why why, 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 why? hopefully <laughs> hopefully they are differently this year yeah I, I don't think they did as far as I know they might be I think they're streaming them now I'm not sure oh, okay that'd be um, cool but you'll have to check out the Oz Comic Con uh, Facebook page hit them up and, and ask them what's going on with it but it's definitely worth watching that panel that panel was hilarious um, then we had what was after that it was um, um, guy from Sanctuary I had a mind blank uh, Christopher? Christopher Christopher Heidel Christopher Heidel was ne- came up next Oh, Christopher was funny. Which I renamed to Drew. And Christopher was great. Um, Christopher was hilarious. I got to do. I got to do the Saturday and Sunday one. So nice. Yeah, we we were. uh, We watched the the Saturday one. The Sunday one was really funny. I had to bail because I had photos. Yeah, the Sunday one was hilarious. Because like, oh, like because they're talking about um Todd. And it was like you play this badass wraith, and they named him Todd. 
<laughs> Why? <laughs> and Christmas is like, I never liked the name, ever. Yeah. He loved the character, just hated the name. Yeah. The, the naming convention for the Wraith was really random. Yeah. It was like Wraith number seven. Oh, look, I'm now Todd. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And then you've got, you've got the Wraith with the the crap over the face kept walking into things and falling <laughs> off the stage and all, yeah. that was fun probably the funniest question um, that was asked is um, his t- when he did um, Supernatural he was um, Alistair yeah and they asked what was it like being chained up it was like here's the thing that scene took three days to shoot the only time I was unchained was for lunch break <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the time he was chained up wow that would suck so, yeah. Jensen was was hilarious. Was loving it. <laughs> yeah, but that's Jensen. He loves everything. He's, oh yeah. He's just like the like people call me the king of trolls, but I'm sorry, I got nothing on Jensen. Jensen's a totally different level. He's like Super Saiyan three troll. <laughs> <laughs> Super Saiyan three Super Saiyan God. <laughs> yeah, just just no. It'll happen eventually. No. No. <laughs> um. So yeah, and for me, the, that's when the sort of the day in the panels ended. I started going, doing all my photo shoots, wandering around, taking lots of photos of cosplay and all that sort of stuff. All of which can be found on the the Facebook page, safesci dot com slash Facebook. Gotta say, um, the... Facebook dot com slash Safe Sci-Fi. God damn it, I did it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got to say, the cosplay this, this year that was, was amazing. That was the end of my panels too, because I got a phone call in the middle of um, Christopher's. Yeah. Oh yeah, the lady in Christopher's like sitting three in front of me was getting really pissed because I was trying to put all my stuff back in my bag because I had to leave to go to the photos and I de- de-packed my bag a bit and I was re-sort of sorting it and putting it all in. She's like, shh, I'm like, lady, it's a zipper. If you can't hear the panel over a zipper, get a fucking hearing aid. <laughs> what the hell? Actually, she's, her ears are probably too sensitive. Yeah. Um, and well, Amy, you were sitting like right in front of me. Mm. You saw, you saw her. She's giving me all sorts of filthy looks and stuff. I'm like, whatever, get over it. I ignored her. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, yeah, my panels ended then too. I got dragged out to lunch after that. I blame Scarecrow. Yes. Yeah. Phone call in the middle of a uh, seminar. I forgot my phone wasn't on silent. I thought oh, I had turned it on silent. Oh, yeah. Wah, wah. Guess who came off the stage to find out what the phone call was about? Christopher. Yes. Uh, oh. So that was you. I knew he. I knew he went off the stage to answer a phone. I was wondering who it actually was. It's, it's, it's really funny if you think about it. They record all the panels, so so you're going to see that unless they edit it out. Yeah. No. No. They'll keep it in. So the only thing, issue I had with Christopher's panel was he kept walking out of the spot, the lights off to the side. And that was making it really hard for the cameras. But that's just the camera tech inside me going, Stay in the light! For the love of God, stay <laughs> well, in the light! Well, it was really cool, like, seeing him, like, go up and, like, go to people and, and give them the microphone and talk and stuff. Like, that was really cool. Yeah, that was really cool. Like, Christopher is f- is fantastic. He really is. Oh, yeah. They all were. Um, I think the next panel I made it into was Jim's panel. Um, I miss Jim's. Bobby from Supernatural. Yeah. And that was, that was really cool. Uh, he... Yeah, to be perfectly honest, the the most fun panel was definitely Ra- David and Rachel's. <laughs> well, the panels that I did, that's just theirs was the best. The laughter and the, everybody like, well, was think... crying, and it was so funny. My favorite one had to have been um, on Saturday. Had to have been um, uh, um, Todd and um, Mike McFarland's top up corner. Mike McFarland, that was ho- and um, no. Dante, that was just ho- I miss that one. Oh my god, that was so funny. <laughs> I didn't actually know. Dante's real, like his real voice, like his normal talking voice, is Zuko's voice. So, nice. It's because a, a lot of people, like, like, like a lot of voice actors, throw their voice for like their roles, but his yeah. voice is is literally Zuko's. Yeah. So when he had the mic talk, I was like, holy crap! <laughs> He's just, actually that, Zuko. <laughs> you just reminded me that I forgot to get my Dragon Ball Z stuff signed by Roshi. <laughs> I, I, um, I, I went up to a mic. Mind you, I didn't have any money left, so it didn't really matter. Oh, um, voice actors were all free. Yeah, for the first one, and 20 bucks thereafter. True. But, um, I went to, um, I have a couple of funny stories of walking around. Um, one was, um, with, I went up to Mike, and I was like, and I was like, Roshi, have you been proving? Oh, my God. (laughs) And Mike's, and Mike's response was, no, and Roshi's voice is like, 
No. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite one was um the Avenue Q guys. Yeah. I um I was walking past and I decided to to sort of sing it under my breath. The internet is really, really great. And they had the oh monster God. out. And the monster was like, bar, bar, and it was like, and I just, I lost. Like, and then all <laughs> the other puppets just looked at him. And I, and then there's just me on the ground in stitches. Like, there was just, I was like, oh, shoot. The Brisbane guys look really, really good. Yeah. Um, with their like puppets. I said, the Avenue Key guys were really yeah. awesome. So, so I, I actually took some photos of them and gave them their own little album, and that's up on uh, the Facebook page as well. So, now, that brings me through till about, what, Sunday afternoon? Sorry, Saturday afternoon. 3.30? Yeah, about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going there, aren't we? Yeah, we're going there. We've got to keep it in pattern. Yeah, we're, all right. We're keeping right. it in order. We're keeping it in order. So... <sighs> So, Stuart, do you want to tell the story or do you want us to tell it for you and mess it up? <laughs> no, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Johnny still hasn't forgiven me for it either. <laughs> <laughs> she asked me, um, requested as much go- um, nerdiness as possible. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, I, I've been planning this for two months to propose to my girlfriend. Uh, well, I should say, then girlfriend at the time, now fiance. So, yeah. obviously, she said yes. Uh, unfortunately, she said yes. Oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm glad she said yes, dude. You deserve it. Yeah, and um, so the way we did it is we got our our um, closest friends and and these guys, <laughs> yeah, these our friends and then these guys. Yeah, we we we're the Klingons. We just cling on to things. <laughs> and um, took over. We we literally took over the um cosplay uh, photography wall at Cosplay Central for like five to ten minutes. I wasn't actually sure how long it actually was. No, it was about three minutes. I checked okay. the I checked the video footage. I've got video in 3D. Okay, yeah. It's hilarious. Well, I wasn't sure because I didn't want to hold it up too long for the other um, yeah. cosplayers. But, um, yeah, you effectively went down on your knee and then she turned up like right then. Yeah. And it's like, Stuart, turn around. And you're like, what? Like, turn and look towards me. Yeah, I was sure, oh, and then listen to me on the ground. I'm going, shit, shit, shuffle, 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 shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I had this cooked up idea that I, I and this is what we did. Uh, what I did is that I called her, saying that I had a fall doing a photo shoot at the um, cosplay photography wall, and that she needed to rush over quickly, which she did. And she and actually so, looked. She looked genuinely scared oh, she, and concerned. She was generally. She she generally told me afterwards that she was almost having a heart attack. Like she was, she, she was legit worried. You mean bastard! <laughs> Which is what I had planned to do the whole time and scare the crap out of her before doing. On, on the plus side, think of it this way: um, you were almost having a heart attack. She was almost having a heart attack. You could have ended up in the ER together. Okay, no, no. I wasn't almost ha- okay, no, no, no. I wasn't almost having a heart, a heart attack. I was almost shitting my pants. Literally, like I could feel the poop. Okay, <laughs> that's that's not so. Yeah. <laughs> TMI, TMI. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, so then I got the others to uh, sort of crowd around me like I, like I actually had a fall and I was on the ground. Jody uh, came over. Uh, I got um, Eve to bring her over because I told her to go to her booth because we were hanging around her a lot throughout the day. Um, and bada bing, I proposed to her. And she said yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was really, really well done. <laughs> she still hasn't forgiven me and probably won't for a while. Yeah, well, what do you expect? <laughs> and it's still really weird using the word fiance. <laughs> yeah, That's trust great. me. You'll get used to it just in time for you to say wife. And then that'll <laughs> feel really weird. And then you'll finally get used, oh, no, no, I'm you'll finally get used to saying wife and. Yeah. No, no, I've already <laughs> jokingly started calling her waifu. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, we wanted to get Jodie on the podcast and get her comments on it, get her side of the story, but... She's at work, so no. Yeah, pretty much. And plus, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I'm going to turn to the cat for a second. No, 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 no. I'm fired, aren't I? Yeah, I'm no. just, just going to let that be its own thing. <laughs> leave it alone and just walk away. Okay, let's do Sundays. Oh, Sundays. oh, Sunday. Actually, before we, yeah, we'll do Sunday, and then we'll we'll play Hawks interviews after that. We've got about two minutes worth of interviews, Hawks done up that I've sort of 
cleaned up a bit, so. Oh, we could always say what we did on Saturday, though. The photo I did at the end. Oh, yeah, the photo. Um, photo? What photo? Now, on, on, on Saturday, I had an idea for the by far the best cross... Um, universe photo in the history of cross universe photos. Oh, yeah. We had um, Brian Krause, aka Leo, aka a white lighter from Charmed. It was effectively an angel in Charmed. Um, and we had Crowley, the King of Hell from Supernatural. And we had my Angel Blade. I'd taken a photo with Crowley earlier in the day where, and where I pretended to stab him with the Angel Blade and he just sort of gave me that eh, whatever pose. Um, Later on, I gave that blade to Amy, and she got a photo with Leo, looking like he's going to try and stab her. And then, that night, when I got home, I photoshopped the two together, and we now have a photo up on Save Sci-Fi of Leo attacking Crowley. <laughs> and I like the whole comment at the end. Yeah. You don't that miss. Cr- Crowley was actually in Charmed. Yeah, yeah. Went to get it signed by Crowley. It's like you realise I was in Charmed. I'm like, wait, back up. What? <laughs> He's one of the demons. He's one of the, ironically, one of the demons in Charmed. Um, so yeah, did I honest? Okay, all fairness, I haven't watched Charmed since the '90s. It's like 20 years ago. <laughs> I was a, I was a little kid, and I watched like sporadic episodes. In all fairness, so I'm, but yeah, I was genuinely surprised that he, he was, yeah. Uh, anyway, we now have a photo of a white lighter stabbing the King of Hell. Well, trying to stab the King of Hell, and the King of Hell is not caring. <laughs> yeah, Carlos is like, meh. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. Um, which was really cool. Got it signed by both. Brian's like, uh, you don't want to mess with a white lighter. And I gave it to um, to Mark, Mark. Shepard Crowley, and I said, "You should. can you write a response? Something like, bitch, please, I'm the King of Hell. And he just wrote, no. <laughs> like, work. No. Like, eh, I'll take I'll take what I can get. <laughs> I'll take what I get. <laughs> so yeah. So that is also up on uh Facebook.com slash save sci fi in the celebrity photo section. I've watermarked it with save sci fi in big letters so that people don't try and steal it. The other I, photos I don't care about, but that one I think's really cool. I just find it funny the signature I got uh, from Leo. I'll heal you. Yeah, don't worry, I'll heal you. It's like um and Blade, you don't come back from that. <laughs> so yeah, he obviously doesn't know Supernatural. But yeah. Speaking of which, I just wanted to announce that we will be um, doing a... Because since we're talking a little bit of fantasy at the moment, we'll be doing a fantasy-themed podcast for episode 52. So if you have any fantasy-themed stuff that you want to talk about, feel free to post it up on the Facebook page or jump onto the chat for that show and we'll... Look forward to it. We could probably cover. We're going to cover all sorts of fantasy stuff. So anyway, onwards. Onwards with Sunday. 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 Now Sunday for me started off with a mad rush, running through the city to get to <laughs> Office Works to print out my photo of Leo and Crowley, <laughs> which was hilarious to bump into you. And then, effectively running back, my legs hurt still. It's a long way. It's from the. Exhibition centre around some roadworks across a bridge, through the city to the other side, to down to the other side, and then up a fucking side road, and the office works is right there. Um, it's not necessarily that far, but I am a lazy fat ass, <laughs> so I'm not much better. So, yeah. and I didn't have to run anywhere. Yeah, yeah some days for me was all my photos and signatures and stuff. So, yeah. Yep. See, I did most of my photos and signatures on the Saturday. The only ones I had left on Sunday were Brian, Mark, and... Um, wow, talk about a mental blank. Brian, Mark, and... Christopher. Mm. Yeah, Todd. Wow. Oh, I just remembered something that happened on Saturday that I forgot about. I need to tell everybody. It was awesome. Okay. So, I've been talking to David Hewlett on Twitter for a while. On and off. And um, I t- mentioned my 3D camera. And I <laughs> said to him that when you come to Brisbane, I'm going to have to get it out and you can have a go with it. And he's like, yeah, that'd be awesome. So he wand- happens to be wandering down the line from the back and I happen to be just off to the side there. I'd already got it out ready to show him. And I'm like, oh, um, David, you want to try my 3D camera? And he's like, oh, the 3D camera. 
she <laughs> grabs it off me and I open it up and get it going. And in the process, somewhere along the lines, the record button was bumped. Um, I don't know, don't know when that happened, but it, it did. I didn't actually find out about this till I went to look at Stuart's video, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> So, because that's the reason I had it. I had it for the Stewart's proposal, and after that is when I bumped into David Hewlett. And so, I've got this video of him pointing it at random people going, wow, this is awesome. Then he spins around and looks at himself and waves. <laughs> <laughs> really quickly, then spins around and look, pans over the rest of the line a bit, then spins it back around to him and goes, does another wave. <laughs> so, I've got 3D video of David Hewlett now. <laughs> Accidentally. He's like, is this recording? I'm like, wait, what? No. Oh, shit. <laughs> So yeah, so that was fun. Um, had a bit of a chat to him when I got to the front of the line. It was good. Wouldn't mind hanging out with him more. So yeah, anyway, back, oh, back, back, back to call. Sunday. Oh, okay. Do it, you're fired. Uh, so Sunday, Amy. Actually, whilst Stuart's gone, let's just pause really quickly and we will play Scarecrow's Interviews. Okay. So these are the interviews done by Hawk. G'day guys, I'm Dave with Save Sci-Fi Podcasts. Ran into you walking through one of the aisles here at, the, at Oz Comic Con today. And I was just wondering what your costumes were and what you thought of the con. Uh, I'm cosplaying Archie from Pokemon. And he's cosplaying an team, a Team Aqua Grunt. Yeah, Team Aqua Grunt from Pokemon as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're having a pretty good time here today. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, a lot of cosplays, a lot of stalls, just great fun. Yeah. Well, we're glad to hear that. I hope you guys enjoy the con and thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. G'day. There you go. I'm Dave from S Save Sci-Fi Podcasts. Just wondering... Uh, just w I'm Dave from Save Sci-Fi Podcasts. We're just wondering the con today and thought we'd get some in interviews with some cosplayers. Uh, can I just grab your name and what you're thinking of the con so far? Um, Chris and It's Awesome. Um, all the cons are always fun, but the fact that Richard Dean Anderson's here is... You don't get better than the man MacGyver. <laughs> Agreed. And last year with Teal'c was just as good as well. It was. It was. Um, met Christopher Judge. He was awesome. Um, good to see. He must have liked it. He's coming back in November. And that is why I'm getting. I'm still wearing the Stargate costume. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Um, plenty of people here today. It seems like a good turnout. Agreed. Highly agreed on that one. Mm. All right, so that. Thanks for that. No worries, man. And we hope we get you, we'll hope to get you on the cast. And that was uh, with our resident Jafar, Horus Guard at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So those are the interviews that uh, Skeker did for us. His name is also Dave. So he introduced himself as Dave in the interviews because he's an idiot and didn't interview him. Introduce himself as Skeker. So. Yeah, anyway, just that figured I'd clarify that. So that is our lovely Scarecrow, who is currently sleeping. This has a kick in the ass. Um, <laughs> Come on, he did a close and finished at 12.30 at night. Yeah, the five hours of sleep is plenty. I called him at 7, uh, 7.15 and he goes, yeah, no. Fair enough. So yeah. Anyway, I'm still going to give him shit for it. So, anyway, um, Sunday, 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 Sunday. So, I did the run, got the picture, came back, went upstairs. Um, oh, the, do we got, want to... Uh, I got, got my stuff signed by Chris, ran down to the car, swapped my stuff, my Chris stuff for my Mark stuff, ran back upstairs, carrying a King Tata's DVD <laughs> unit. Because you should have given us... Away. You should have given it to me, and I could have just stored it up in the platinum lounge. We got, we got, we got complimentary cloak room. Yeah, so do, so do I with the with my my pass. Um, I just didn't want to bring it up. I couldn't bring it up and the painting up at the same time, the the yeah. enemy fleet picture at the same time. So I just sort of prioritised the enemy fleet picture. So I missed Mark by literally two minutes um, <laughs> for the TARDIS, and finally, yeah, got back up there and he was gone. I was just like, oh, that'd be bloody right. So then I had to find somewhere to, to hide my TARDIS, which I threw in the media room for the rest of the day. And guess what we found out in the media room? A new website to use. Oh, yes. To Clara. Um, looks like it's going to be really interesting. I'm going to be spending today really sort of digging into it. It's an education-based, um, sort of a Pinteresty type web page. 
but for education mostly, where you can get different articles and stuff and pin them to your account and then um, highlight specific sections that if you want to focus on a specific section, you can just highlight it. You can then form a, you can then open up like a group conversation about either that specific point or the article in its entirety. And it's, yeah, it's, it's really, really interesting. And it's only really, really new. So if you haven't heard of Declara, look it up. Um, looks it's like it's going to be really interesting. So, yeah. It's only 10 weeks old. Exactly. It's really new. So, and really small. So, yeah. so we're, we're definitely looking at um, looking like we're going to set up some stuff on there. We encourage you guys to go over and mm-hmm. sign up and test it out. All the feedback goes straight to the creator himself, uh, herself and allows them to sort of sort out the details really, really quickly. Um, and any issues you have, they can sort of help sort out. The only issue I have so far is I don't think there's a way to set up an actual page yet. You can't set up your own page. I'm trying to work out how to set up ch- a channel. And if we can do that, well, then we'll have the Save Sci-Fi channel, which will be specifically for pop culture stuff. So, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get onto that um, when we finally get that sorted, which will probably be this week. So, moving on. Rest of Sunday. Wow, the amount of stuff I did Sunday. I spent probably half a Sunday at the zombie cage. <laughs> <laughs> I have a funny story with the zombie cage, actually. Oh, go for it. Um, so, me and Jenny were walking around. And she's not a big zombie fan. Oh, God. So so the zombies got a little too close to her. Normally, normally I would laugh at this point. I, I literally thought I was a Jedi. Full on got the lightsaber, stepped in front of her, and I was like, just, tr-, and I went to them, just tried, and literally stared all of them down. <laughs> Like I full on oh, went in for it. Like I full Why on... did I not have my camera? Why was I not there for like, that? I that would have been great. Full on <laughs> defensive, like lightsaber up just protect like I went full on defensive on him. <laughs> one her what Jody's response to that. You're an she idiot. was surprised. <laughs> she was surprised as well. <laughs> she because <laughs> normally I would laugh, but I sh- something just came over me. I think I turned into Virginia, I was like, That's my bomber! That's my woman. You can't have her. <laughs> I need to get. I need to get them to do that line as well. <laughs> Man. But yeah, oh. like I fall on with defensive. I'm trying not to laugh into the mic. <laughs> Too late. Oh, just, uh, oh man, I'm just. They're just ridiculous on so many levels. Um, Obviously, but, I went back and talked to them, and we we're all good and stuff. Like we were just yeah. character and having fun. Yeah. Of course. They guys, those guys are amazing. Oh, aren't they? They've actually got an event um, coming up. That, again, the details are in the album I posted for the zombie stuff up on Save Sci-Fi. Um, they've got an event coming up in October where um, I'm, yeah, it, it looks like it's going to be like a zombie outing in the bush. So that's going to be oh, fun. God, that would be terrifying. Yeah, it's up, it's, up, it's up near Mount Tambourine somewhere. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm definitely going to check that out. So, I'll tell Jodie not to go. <laughs> so, David, you were having fun tormenting the kids in the cages? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> so, um, they they didn't have an actual sort of person there specifically taking photos for them. And um, I'd spent the past sort of two hours walking around taking photos of people in cosplay and having a bit of a laugh and all that sort of stuff. And um, so we are... Um, what are we... So I eventually settled around the zombie cage because they needed someone to take photos and there wasn't anyone. They, they didn't have anyone that could do it. Um, so I was taking like proper professional photos of everyone and getting them to look them up on the, um, the pay, the, our Facebook page so that they could find them and that way parents would have a decent quality picture, not just the one off their phone because I've got a really good SLR camera. Um, when so it wants to play nice. When it wants to play nice. It doesn't always want to play nice. Sometimes it just wants to be a piece of crap. It was playing nice for the most part, so I'll just, I'll just go with it. Um, anyway, the amount of times that, like, half the photo, well, most of the photos are people with the zombies, but there are a few that I caught just before it happened of people being scared of the zombies without realizing the zombies were sneaking up behind them. <laughs> so there's a few photos of kids that look scared, of kids running around their mum, and the mum standing in the middle trying the best not to piss herself laughing, and the kids sort of doing loops with this zombie following around around the mum. That was hilarious. <laughs> and there was this one little kid in a red shirt who kept coming back. Like, well, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. 
if he's in a red shirt, why is he not dead? I know. <laughs> so he, he would turn up out of nowhere. And every, when we first saw him, he was scared of the zombies. What had nothing to do with them. I convinced him to go over near them to get a photo with them. <laughs> and so he did that, and the parents were like, that's cool, and they wandered off. About five minutes later, this kid was back. Couldn't see the parents. Like, where the hell did this, where the hell did this kid come from? Um, looked around. Eventually, mum and dad came wandering back past and got up him for disappearing on them. Yeah. So, so he slipped away while they weren't paying enough attention. So another about ten minutes went past. Take a few more photos. Look up. Here's this kid. He's back again. <laughs> it's like, aren't you better be with your mum and dad? He's like, oh, no. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's like, I don't know where they are. So you come back to the zombies. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> whatever. And this kid spent about half an hour milling around the zombie cage before his parents turned up again. And they were very not happy about this kid disappearing for a second time. That was effectively the theme of the day. Every time I turned around, this kid had reappeared. And soon thereafter, the parents would come and get him, drag him off, and then he'd turn up again. <laughs> so I was like, whatever. At least I know where to find him. So... So we were, I was taking photos um, there, and at one point, some people were wandering past. There's a group of about half a dozen people. And I'm like, oh, do you want your photos? Because I'm just like, do you want your photos of the zombies? And I just got so used to saying it, I was just saying it to everybody. What I didn't realize was, it was Jim and the handler. <laughs> and it wasn't until after I'd said, oh, sorry, don't, <laughs> sorry, sorry don't, don't worry, it's all good. And he sort of went, smiled, gave me his phone walked over and I took a photo on his phone of him with the zombies. <laughs> so that was cool. And then he thanked me and wandered off. I was like, woohoo, that was awesome. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. And then, yeah, that was a, almost the rest of my day was spent at that cage. Wandered around for a bit, went and got my Mark Shepard stuff signed eventually when he turned, finally turned back up around three o'clock. And then um, went and caught up with joined Amy in the David Hewlett line and went and said hello to him again and gave him some a, a present. Um, I've got the Star Trek uh, DVD unit, DVD, sorry, not DVD, Starship collection. And part of that was they gave you a Star Trek bridge plaque. When my one turned up, it was chipped. So I sent, I sent him a picture and I sent him in and I said, look, um, this thing's damaged, do you want me to post it back to you or are you just going to... And they're like, no, no, don't worry about sending it back to us. We'll just send you a replacement. So they sent me a replacement. I've had this thing sitting on my shelf for a better part of 12 months. Um, actually, probably longer than that. And then on his, po on his uh, David Hewlett on his YouTube channel mentioned that he was setting up a nerd space. And I thought, you know what? If I ever get the chance to give it to him, I'll hang on to it and just give it to him to put it in his nerd space. And sure enough, a couple of weeks ago when David Hewlett was announced, I was like, yep, got to remember to do that. Totally forgot. <laughs> totally forgot. The only good um, thing is that I had to do mine. <laughs> so put it put it in my bag. Totally forgot. And then um, it's like screw it off. I'll make an excuse to join the line. I don't even have to get anything signed. I'll just line up with everybody else and then give it to him and disappear. Um, and so and then Amy's like, oh, I've got to do my thing. So I was, sweet, join the line. Gave him that. He thought it was absolutely spectacular. He's like, oh, I love getting gifts. And I said, well, how about this? And I gave him a copy of our Ultimate Fleet prints. Um, one of the Hero Fleet, one of the Enemy Fleet. And he thought that was absolutely spectacular. So he was going through, going, oh, I know this person. I know this person. I know. Oh, yeah, I am. I'm like, yeah. I said, what you should do is take it to the cons to get it signed. Five bucks says you fill those out before I fill mine out. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably what happened. So, yeah. Um, I don't think he'll have a hard time. No, no, no he, he really won't. He could, he could start off with Chris. He was sitting right next to him. <laughs> Actually, no, he was sitting the other side of Rachel, but close enough. So, and I think the most fun of the day was Richard Dean Anderson. Oh no! Oh, poor oh. Richard Dean Anderson. <laughs> the lines. Oh, the lines. Oh my, yeah. So on Saturday, when I left at about six o'clock on Saturday, I was exhausted. But the last thing I remember before waking up on the land room floor Sunday, I don't remember driving home. That's not good at all. Um, the last <laughs> thing I remember on Saturday is walking past Richard Dean Anderson's line at 6 o'clock after the convention's closed, and his line was still like four rows long. Mm. So they gave everybody who was returning Saturday, uh, uh, sorry, Sunday, an extra sort of a part that said, look, bring it back to us and we'll give you a thing and you can get it signed tomorrow. And everyone else, they, they, they shuffled through as quickly as they could. 
Sunday clothes rocks around. The day they can't pass people on to the next thing. And he's got seven l- columns worth of people lined up to get stuff signed by him at closing time. I uh, talked to the media person. 9.30. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, brother. 9.30 is when they finally had the place cleared and gone. Uh, he finished doing his signings about 8 o'clock. So it's two hours to get through that line of people. That is crazy. Good thing so, I didn't end up sticking around. Yeah. Thank you, David. Yep. And we won't, I won't tell you how that played out. But, but there was, I, I, I bullshitted the... Bu- okay, put it this way. Um, the media passes don't technically get priority. But because they're on the, exactly the same lineage as the priority passes... They get confused sometimes. Most of the time. A lot of the time. <laughs> so maybe a little bit of skipping to the front of the line happened. <laughs> it happened. Yeah. Whoopsie. Um, so, so that was Oz Comic Con. We loved it. Yeah. We really did. It was. It's probably the best con I've been to in years. I said that last year about Oz Comic Con. And I've got to say it again. It's, they're, they're crapping all over Supernova at this point. The organization was better for the most part. The, that being said, Supernova did drop some bombs over the weekend. Oh, didn't it? It like Oz Comic Con is just ripping into Supernova left, right, and center. It's like the it's like Indominus Rex on a T Rex. It's just it's, you're gonna have a bad day. Um, and yet Supernova's definitely clawing back, and we got some news for that. But I just realised we've only got twenty minutes left to cover Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything left from Sunday that you guys want to talk about? No, no, not really. Just fo- I did. Just got I did lines and lines and more lines. Yeah, <laughs> lines. What are lines? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, def- I def- didn't pay the a- dollars. Yeah, definitely jump on the Facebook page. Definitely check out the photo albums. They're all on there. Um, we're doing a group album where we're trying to get as many of the people who had photos with celebrities as possible um, into the same album up on Save Sci-Fi. That's any con from anywhere in the world. If you want to be part of it join in. I've just finished uploading the better part of 200 pictures into that. Oh, joy. Taking all the people, making sure the locations are right. It takes a while. Um, so anyway, let's move on to Doctor Who. Uh, the new season of Doctor Who is back. And boy, did it kick off. with. Oh, yeah. Like they, they needed something. They needed to kick it off big. They, they really did. really kicked it off. Like I was like, what? Yeah. Hand mines. What the hell? And the origin of Davros, like, wow. Yeah, Davros' origin story. And Davros, at the end of his life, having a sonic screwdriver still. Yeah, but that still begs the question, how did he get out? Yeah. That will be answered next week. Yeah. So, but yeah it's, And it's... how did Missy come back as well? <laughs> oh, Missy, yeah. See, the thing about um, Russell... Russell, is he still the showrunner? No. No, no, it's Moffat. Moffat. The thing about Moffat is, he actually said in an interview that he used to love the old master. How, yeah. even though the old master looks like he'd been killed, his response was always, I escaped. And that was it. That's all they covered. They had no explanation. It's yeah. just, I escaped. escaped. Yeah. And so he said that in an interview. So when Missy came back, and she's like, eh. I survived. And no explanation. Everyone's like, give us an explanation. How did she survive? He's like, nope. Nope. Not happening. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that was that. The the funniest thing had to have been the um, the uh, writing the uh, playing the guitar while writing the tank. Yeah, and it's just still begs the question: How do you get the tank back? I know he's got the tars and all, but that's still a lot to take back. Yeah, it's, well, it's it's not only that; it's who was driving the tank. He wasn't. That too. Maybe it was his pet fish. Maybe. <laughs> that was the worst <laughs> joke. I was just like, well... Not the pet fish again. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, man. The fish tank. It was, oh. I, 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 did, I, do, uh, I will say, I loved getting to see Scarrow. That was cool. Yeah, that was really cool. And then just Missy's face when she realizes this is... Oh, fuck. Yeah. We should have stayed inside. Yep. <laughs> Like, oh no, we're not on a planet. This isn't a space station. Wait. That's no moon. That's no space station. That's Scarrow. Oh, oh God, fuck. it's Scarrow. 
<laughs> like you, you could see the fear in the in her face. Yeah. So effectively, the the Daleks are back to full force, as if the time war never happened. So, yeah. Well, I'm wondering because of of if the change of the fiftieth, if that affected everything somehow. Yeah. Well, the the Daleks were still back anyway, really. Which so, let's just remember, they didn't get wiped out because of the time war because they froze the planet. So. Yeah. Therefore, technically, they would still be. Lo- they would still. There are forces to still be alive and well. Yeah, well, Matt's in the Matt Smith era, the Daleks did come back. Remember with a progenitor. Yeah. Progenitor. Yeah. So, yeah. um, and yeah, so well, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to next week's episode, which is yeah. more than I could say for this week. When I, how much I was looking forward to this week's episode because I totally forgot it was happening. <laughs> Oz Comic Con oh. was so brutal that. I saw a post about it on Facebook, and I was like, "Oh yeah, talk to who's on this weekend." I knew. How the no, hell I knew, did I forget that? Me and Jody knew that it was on. Me and yeah. J- <laughs> it was like there was no way we were missing, but we were nowhere near expecting what it was. Yeah, it was. It was probably one of the. I would go as far really, as saying it's the best Capaldi episode. It was really well well written as well. Like that was a yeah. really well written episode. Yeah, the, the the monk snake guy. Oh yeah. How much did that remind you of Orochimaru? <laughs> it also scared the fuck out of Jody because she doesn't like snakes. She doesn't like snakes, and yet she lives in Australia. <laughs> well, we don't have. Yeah, well, it's not. It's not like we live in the bush. There is no not bush in Australia. Everything <laughs> is bush. I get kangaroos jumping down the road out front of my place. True you story. Li- you live down south. I live in the city. <laughs> yeah, but still, I almost hit a kangaroo on the Pacific Motorway near. In, um, where was it? Near the exit for the convention center there. <laughs> near, near where the tunnel is. You know the tunnel? The, the Legacy Cl- Way tunnel. The Clem 7? Oh, Clem 7. Yeah, near Clem 7, entry south side, heading mm. north, there was a kangaroo jumping along the highway. And I'm just like, what fucking is going <laughs> on? <laughs> it's like, fucking Now here's scary. a question. What condition am I going to be on Saturday this week? Yeah. With the um, river fire at Brisbane. Uh, I won't be at that. <laughs> yeah, I don't go to River Fire. Normally I do, but I'm hanging out with because my cousin's birthday is this weekend, so I'm like, ha ha ha. Well, you could just you could just tell him that you're throwing him the biggest party ever. <laughs> so, anyway, I, think, I think there's going to be a few things to celebrate. So, <laughs> what would you rate this week's episode of Doctor Who? That that is a really like everything was really well done. The only thing I don't understand is when did Clara start working for Unit? Oh, she's been part of unit for a while, since the since the fiftieth. Like in the fiftieth episode, they um, sorry, the fiftieth anniversary special. My bad, I'll get it right in a second. Um, they did have unit involved then, and they did show that she'd been there before, but she just had a memory wipe. So you could say after the events of the fiftieth, she started working for unit, or Fair at enough. least became an advisor to unit to a point, a way of contacting the doctor if needed. But yeah, um, as I said, it, it was a really well done episode. Yeah, like that that episode kept you guessing a yeah, lot. It did. I'm, right up, right up to the end, which we're not going to mention. Yeah, right. Up to, I'm definitely giving that a nine. Like that was a really, really well done episode. And if that sets the tone for the rest of the season, there's going to be a really good season. Yeah, now, me, I'm not going to be that generous. I'll give it an eight and a half. Um, it was really, really good, and I can't necessarily pick a flaw with it overall, but there was something that just Actually, niggled no. at me that I couldn't put my finger on. Actually, no, I can pick so, a flaw. Dude. Oh, God, no. There's your flaw. There we go. That's what Lost Point is for. Dude. 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 So, yeah. that's, anyway. That's the other way to explain the episode. Dude. Pretty much. Okay, Stuart. do you have any news? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Stuart, you got the news. Yep, so yes, as I said... As I did mention, Supernova dropped some bombs over the weekend. Oh, yes. Some really big ones. Yeah. So, let, let, we'll go from the beginning. Let's start with Matthew Lewis, a.k.a. Never Longbottom. This is, his, this is his first Australian um, convention ever, actually. Wow. So I've already got some... I, so, my Harry Potter book's getting another signature, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, I, got the, I got the limited edition Blu-ray set. When I gave it to, um, not Eva, the other one that was at Oz Comic Con, he'd never seen one Robbie. before. Robbie. Robbie. Never seen one before. And he's flicking through going, wow, this looks spectacular. This is great. Wow. 
And he's like, look at it, but it doesn't have a photo of me in it. <laughs> Does that really surprise you, though? So, well, he so played he had, young he had, James. Well, he didn't have much to do with it. Yeah, I know. And so he, we did, I found I him, a, that to him. <laughs> I found him a blank page to sign. But yeah, that, that, that was pretty funny. So yeah, uh, moving along with guests, uh, we move over to the one and only Chewbacca, Peter Mayhew. <laughs> you all sounded like a drunk Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've actually got a talk with Peter um, before. He's really awesome, so we could be meeting Peter again. Nice. We'll definitely have to put yeah. him for a. Moving good. along to Matt Nabel, aka Ray Al Ghul from Arrow. Ooh. Breaky Walls and Brothers and, in yeah, Arms. Uh, Breaky Walls, Brothers in Arms is also in Riddick as well. I've noticed since um, Oz Comic Con's muscled in on these guys that their lack of a better word, quality of guest. Has improved. Has, has improved dramatically. Oh, and now we're, now we're really starting to get to the big ones. Sean... Sh- I'm going to say his last name wrong. Oh, fuck it. Goku. Yeah, I know. That was That's actually been up on their page for about a month, believe it or not. Yeah. It's been up there for a while, but they haven't announced it on Facebook until after Oz Comic Con hit. Yeah, I think and they're just sort of like, yeah, we'll wait for this whole Oz Comic Con thing to blow over, and then basic, we'll yeah, Basically, the, voice, the English voice actors of Goku and Vegeta are going to be there. Yeah. I have... I've- I have to get um, Chris Sabat to either be like, shut up, Kakarot, or, or just be like, that's my bomber! Yeah. Chris I, Sabat I, is awesome. Yes. He's brilliant. Chris I've met as well. is hilariously so, awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to getting all of my Dragon Ball Z stuff signed by Goku. I am actually was out in the lounge room having a look just now. I've got a big Goku statue, a little Goku statue. Um, a Go- Father, Son, Kamehameha Goku statue. I've got every season of Dragon Ball Z in the orange fat pack. I've got every one of Dragon Ball Kai. I've got most of the remastered Dragon Ball Z. I'm looking at going. Wow, I'm going to be spending yeah. all my money just on fucking well, Goku. I've, I've got Battle of God, so I'll get I'll get I'll get my Battle of God signed. <laughs> he may be free. No, no, they, they, they normally no. do free for the first one, and then it's like twenty bucks each for the rest of them. I'm looking at it going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Like there's a lot. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing I'm annoyed about Oz Comic Con just gone is I didn't get a chance to buy the Planet of the Apes head because I wanted to get a photo with David Hewlett with that and <laughs> that just never happened. So maybe next time, David, when you're back in Australia, maybe next time. So. But yeah, um, I actually haven't checked any of the other news because I've been tired, so I'm catch- trying to catch up on everything. Yeah. There's a fan theory from um, Force Awakens of, how- of why Vader's involved, Ooh. Of-, of Vader's involvement. Ooh. And it involves Kylo Ren. He's either obsessed with Vader and he's trying to resurrect him. Or... He's um, trying to do a Voldemort? No, no, no. Uh, well, to, <laughs> to clone him. Or he's going to recreate him by making Luke go to the dark side. Which Interesting. Which I don't see that happening. I don't think Luke, after so many years of riding the middle of the road, is going to go dark side. Oh, yeah. Stuart, did you happen to see the picture on Facebook I threw up for you? Uh, which one? You com- Stuart in his Jedi gear had a really awesome photo. Oh, yeah, I saw that actually, yeah. And um, so I was bored, like I always am, and decided to Photoshop him standing in front of... Uh, Kylo. Kylo Ren? Yeah. In the forest uh, as he draws his lightsaber. And actually didn't come out as well as I would have liked, but it still looks pretty good. It looks like Stuart's about to crap his pants in front of him. It's really funny. <laughs> I'm going, oh, crud. <laughs> <laughs> That's effectively what I imagined it him saying. Okay. I just poked my Facebook. <laughs> Got three police officers sitting in a TARDIS. Oh, oh yeah, that. That was that good. Was hilar- yeah, the, uh, the Queensland police. Yeah. Uh... Their Facebook page is hilarious. Oh, yeah, QPS. Gotta love it. So, yeah, so you don't actually have any other news? I'm trying to find some of this. Not really much. Uh, the, uh, Coloss- apparently, Colossus isn't a good amount of um, Deadpool. Yeah? Yeah, so according to uh, the, um, the uh, creator, like the guy who's uh, doing the film, uh, Rob Le- um, Liefeld, uh, apparently, um, even though we saw a glimpse of him, there's going to be a hell of a lot more. Like, he's going to get, like, proper fight scenes and stuff, so that'd be really cool, because I actually really like Colossus. Yeah, that'd be really good. There was, um, there was a fan theory that popped up about 
Star Wars ages and ages and ages ago. Um, but I can't remember what... I'm pretty sure we've already covered it in the podcast, but I can't remember when. And it was the... The one where... Um, what's her face? Padme did not die of a broken heart. She had a life sucked away from her by the Emperor into Anakin to keep Anakin alive. <laughs> oh, that'd be interesting. I don't... So, I don't... I could have sworn we'd covered it on the podcast, and if we hadn't, I'm sure it was on my list of things to cover, and it just fell off. Yeah. We got a, um, got some Supergirl news. Yep. We got our first look at Red Tornado. Oh, yeah. That, does he and... remind you of... Um, I've been, a Red Ivan Ooze. No, he reminds me of bloody Vision. Like like a recolored version of Vision from <laughs> Avengers. I just sort of look at it and goes, they're, 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 they're or a, a shitty, or a shittier thing. version of Apocalypse. Yeah, that's not really. It's pretty hard to do considering what Fox has done with Apocalypse. <laughs> True. Yeah. True. So yeah. Um. Let's see. What? See, I can't open up news on my computer while I'm doing the podcast. So I get Stuart to do it because if I do, it crashes Skype, and Skype is already being temperamental enough. Don't want to risk it. Oh, um, your friend, uh, Rambo Sun Franks, got to do an interview with the Lost Girl. Um, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That, that's actually really cool. If you get a chance to to have a look at that interview, have a look. It's actually really well done. So, we love you, Rambo. Can't wait to have you back on the podcast. Just saying. Yeah, other than that, it really wasn't. <laughs> yeah, other than that, it's been, it's been a it's hectic, actually... hectic oh, weekend. Oh, oh, um... Uh, Chief O'Brien, the graphic novel. Oh, yes, yes. We've got to give a shout-out to the Chief O'Brien graphic novel. Yeah, they've got a Kickstarter. I'm yeah. trying to get the website up. But I'll be back in a sec. So, so someone's doing a... Um, Chief O'Brien in Star Trek as a graphic novel because, effectively, he's just a transporter technician. Holy cow. He's not going to go anywhere. So, yeah. Um, so, the goal was 15000 at the moment, it is at 49,000. With 40 hours to go. That's insane and impressive. So maybe he'll get some decent animation. The only issue I had with it was the animation looked very... average, lack of a better word. It was, it was good, but it wasn't... Well, hopefully with like with the yeah. money, Zell will do a lot more with it. So. Oh, exactly. So, yeah, so if you guys want to go over and help support them... Any more than you already apparently needs, feel free to go right ahead and do that. Um, Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. What is that noise? Ah! That'd be David calling. <laughs> uh, he's finally awake. He's finally. We're finishing and he finally wakes up. That'd be bloody right. <laughs> so. Anyway. Um. So, if you guys haven't gone to... Oh, the zombie thing. Look up the zombie thing page. Let's get the details for the zombie thing. Um, zombie thing, okay. Yeah, it's, it's just go to the zombie album on Save Sci-Fi and just the link's there. Noisy. Yeah. He always is noisy. Now, uh, Evil Corp. That. Evil Corp, yes, yes. Um, if you're, you like your zombies and you're in the Brisbane area, check out Evil Corp on Facebook. Uh, the link is in the zombie, um, the zombie photo album on Save Sci-Fi description. Um, check them out. It's, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be October at some point. I can't remember when. Stuart, find out. You've got a minute, literally a minute, to find out. Oh. Yep. Um, um, just get the site back up. And I've got a helicopter Ooh. sounding like it's about to land on my roof. So we're going to talk about the ships next time. Yeah, we, we, next next week we're going to cover the we're going to do the big awesome space battle. Are you talking about the um battle. the Cedar Creek slasher attraction? Yeah, that that. There's no date on their page yet. It just says October yeah, still. Okay, well. Yeah, it just says this October for a limited season. Sweet. Keep an eye on it. It's going to be really really cool. Um, so we're going to go. We've got thirty seconds left. So we'll catch you later. Bye all. Bye everyone. So and remember. No matter how hard things seem, there's always something always, going on harder. Always going to be something harder to do. And when you're running through a city, 
trying to find your way to an office works you don't know the location of. For the love of God, use the map on your phone. <laughs> you don't want to run half a block too far. Take, I learned that one from experience. Anyway, life's lesson over. Bye. 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 Bye.